Theater's 60th anniversary. Wow. wow. Happy anniversary to them. Yes, they are buying me dinner for their 60th anniversary. <laughs> I know. Um, I have some vocabulary that's going to be a review for you. I'm sure you know most of these, but because we're going to do a dialogue, one of these jobs is in the dialogue, so I just wanted to review it. So this is just a bit of a review. And a good chance for us to practice pronunciation. One here, one there, one for you, one for you. Yeah. One for you, and you, and here's, here's one for you. Okay, so you probably are looking and you're recognizing each of these as you're looking at them. They're pretty straightforward. What is this? Fire truck. Fire, fire truck. Fire. Repeat after me. Fire truck. Fire, fire truck. truck. Fire truck. Fire truck. In the United States, fire trucks are red. Although someone said they saw one that was yellow. I've been doing this lesson a few days. Somebody told me in Mexico, fire trucks are red. True? Mm -hmm. Are fire trucks red in your, in your country? Yes. My country yes. is red. Right. Red? Your country? Are they red? Yes. Fire red. trucks? Blue. Blue? Red and blue. Red and blue. Red and blue. Red? Red. 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 Yellow. Red and yellow here. Yeah. Red and white. Here. The people who drive the fire truck are yes. called firefighters. 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 If it's a man, sometimes we call them a fireman. Or if it's a woman, sometimes we call them a firewoman. Okay? I like to do this too because this is level five, six. Let's get some other parts of this. Do you know what they call this? Yellow? Yellow. What do you know what they call this? Helmet. 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 Very good. What about this right here? It has a word space. Mass. Mass. How about this? What's up? Hose. 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 And this is, a, I, I guess, an oxygen tank. Oxygen. So he can go into the smoke and breathe. Yeah. Ever wanted to be a fireman, anybody? I think it would be a good job. Police. No, too dangerous? <laughs> you would like to be a fireman? Yeah. Yeah, I think it. Yeah. When I was a kid, I used to pretend I was with the garden hose, squirt my brother. You're on fire! <laughs> uh, police car. Police car. Speed up for me. Police car. Police car. Police car. Police car. And the person in the police car is a police officer. Police officer. Police officer. Police officer. And we have our own police officer here on campus. You recognize him? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. His name is Craig Schwartz. Repeat after me. Schwartz. Schwartz. It's a hard word, huh? Schwartz. Schwartz. It's a German name, he told me. Schwartz. Schwartz. You can say to him, hello, Officer Schwartz, when you walk by. Very, very nice man. Very nice man. Schwartz. It, he told me it's a German word. Schwartz is a German name. It's also a German word, and it means black. So there you go. So I wonder what Schwarzenegger means. Anat Schwarzenegger? No. No, no. Okay. Ambulance. 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 And the people that drive the ambulance. Paramedics. paramedics. And this is why I'm showing this, because our dialogue that we're going to read has paramedics in it. Paramedics. Paramedic. They're the people that drive in the ambulance. They can help you if you're hurt. If you're really hurt, they will put you on one of these. Yep. Stretcher. 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 All right. So we got stretcher. I'm just going to show you a picture. Tell me, tell me what it is. What's this? Police, Police officer. Very good. What's this? Fire, Fire truck. truck. Excellent. Fire truck. Paramedic. Very good. Police car. Police car. Yes. Police car. Ambulance. Yes. Firefighter. Fire. Fire. Yes. That's it. Woo you guys get an A plus. Mark that in their grade book. Mark. Got it. You got an A plus on that. All right. Okay. Now we're going to talk about what is an emergency, even though we have um, discussed it before. But an emergency is something that is serious. 
or bad. It's an unexpected, unexpected. It is unexpected or a surprise, not a good surprise. It's not like, here's your birthday present. Oh, surprise! No, it's a bad <laughs> surprise. <It's> <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Yeah. And they can be dangerous. dangerous. I'm going to show you some pictures. And you're going to tell me, we're, we're going to talk about the, what should we do if we saw this for you. And you. And you. And you. And you. And some for the history and puns. Here we go. This is a building fire. building fire. Repeat after me. Building fire. Building yes. fire. The building, oops, the building is on fire. You're driving down the street. You see the building fire. What should you do? Call, Call 911. That is correct. I don't think you would, any of us would be in the position to try to rescue anybody. Mm -hmm. This looks like this is pretty, pretty well on fire. How about this? Car accident. Car accident. Would you call 911? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What if there was someone hurt and no one was there yet? Remember what I said. You want to check the scene first. The scene. Make sure it's safe. Make check sure it's safe. Scene. You don't want to run across the street to help and then you get hit by a car. Yeah. That would be bad. Yeah. You want to check the scene. Brownie. 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 Raise your hand if you know how to swim. Okay, then if you, those who raise their hand, they know how to swim. Maybe you could save them. But if you don't know how to swim, yell for help. Call 911. You don't want to go out there and try to help them or we're going to have two people drowning. Yeah. Brownie. 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 Heart attack. Heart attack. Heart attack. You're at home. And your husband or your wife is having a heart attack, call 911. Yeah, these are all emergencies. Ready for the next one? Mm -hmm. He's stealing from her. He's a it's robbery. 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 He's stealing from her. That's an emergency. If you saw that happening, you definitely want to call 911. Okay, we're going to switch gears. I'm going to show you a picture. Some of these pictures you would want to call 911 for, some of them you won't. But just a quick, that's what they're called, is when to call 911. So this is what we want to keep in mind. We, we want to call 911 if we're reporting a crime, to report a fire, or to save someone's life. So that's our criteria. That's what we're going to look for. We call 911 to stop a crime. Who would come to stop a crime? Yes. To report a fire? Firefighter. A firefighter and maybe the police. To save a life? Ambulance. Yes. Was that? Well, you can take him to the doctor if you have time. Okay, so you ready? Yeah. yeah. Should I call 911? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would for this. I would for this. My kitty's stuck in the tree. Should I call 911? No. 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 <laughs> Your cat can fall out of the tree, it'll be fine. He's got nine lives, they say. How about this? They're bumped into each other. They're oh. friends? I don't know. <laughs> I accept yes and no. Because it really depends. If it was just a little bump and there's a scrape, they can exchange insurance. Yes. Call their insurance. But the guy is calling 911. Yeah, he might, or he might be calling his insurance agent. Yes. Or he might be calling his wife saying, I'm going to be a little late. <laughs> but now, if he starts getting mad, you know, maybe call 911 as you're backing up. Okay? Yeah. All right, how about this one? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'd call 911. Oh, yes. Quick. 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 In 
fact, if I was on the ground with her, I might look up and say, call 911. You know, because I'm gonna have to give her CPR maybe. Yeah. Oh no, look, he scraped his knee. <laughs> Should I call 911? No. Just no, just put a band on. Look at his lip, though. <laughs> so bad. My father tells me that when I was born, that's what I looked like. <laughs> How about it? Robbery. 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 Should I call 911? Yes. yes. They're arguing. No. No. <laughs> no. Not going to call 911 over an argument. Mr. Anton's a 49er fan, right? Yes. And I'm a Raider fan. We might argue about football. Don't call 911. <laughs> How about these two kids? They got in a fight. No. No, I don't think so. There's an adult there. You can separate them. How about this? Yes. Yeah, I would call 911. Definitely would call 911. How about this one? Yeah. I definitely would be calling 911. I have to wonder why three cars fell in. I would think after the first car fell in, the other cars wouldn't drive. Yeah. But maybe they didn't realize it. Okay. Let me move on. Did you know, and it's going to be later in the year that this will happen, that we offer for levels four, five, and six in ESL CPR classes for free. For free. Uh, usually we do one time in the fall and one time in the spring. We'll offer a free CPR class. Uh, if you're interested, sign up because CPR can really, well, save someone's life, okay? Or if you're taking the health uh, home care class with Mr. Cushman, you will also receive that there. Let me tell you why CPR is important, why it's necessary. Once the heart beating, <clears throat> Once the heart stops beating, you have 15 seconds before the lack of oxygen to the brain will cause you to go unconscious, okay? Within 30 to 60 seconds, with no breathing, you are gonna start developing brain damage, okay? So what we have to do is, if you know CPR, you know how to pump that blood for them so that the, the brain damage doesn't occur. There's some reasons to learn CPR. Hey, you okay? More than 300,000 people will have a heart attack this year in the United States. That's a lot of people. CPR it was, is what we do to keep the blood flowing while they're, while they're in the middle of their heart attack. Until the paramedics arrive or until they wake up. That's the first reason. The second reason is it's easy to learn. You don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a nurse. You don't have to be a paramedic. Anybody can learn to do CPR. Third one is you would know what to do in the case of an emergency. Okay? If someone has a heart attack, you have confidence that I can possibly save them. I can possibly save them. And then the last one is 80% of cardiac arrests happen at home. So the person you most likely would help if you know CPR would be a loved one, okay? The person you would most likely help if you knew CPR would be somebody that you love. If someone has a heart attack at home and they don't get CPR or nobody tries to help them, the survival of that heart attack is about 0%, a little bit better than 0%. So it's very important. Now, I have two videos I want to play. Hopefully you're, you're does this have sound? Yeah, the better sound on this one. Then I'll, I'll play on this one. Then. Is it a disc? No, it's uh, it's a video. Oh. Yeah, you, you should read. Yep, yeah. It'll probably work on that. Okay. Okay. Now this is a true story. The young girl who had a heart attack's name is Claire. She opens the video up. She's talking, so you know she lives. Okay. But uh, often in the United States, they videotape sport events, and like they often do, they videotape a volleyball game that she was playing in when she had the heart attack. So you will see her actually have the heart attack. But it's, this is why it's important to know CPR, because they knew CPR, and they knew how to administer first aid, as well as use an AED. I don't remember what the A and the E stand for, but the D is defibrillator. What that is, if someone has a heart attack, they put a pad here and a pad here, and then a massive electrical shock restarts their heart. 
and saves their life, hopefully. Hopefully. Now, if you did it to somebody that's healthy, it would kill them. But if you do it to somebody who's having a heart attack, it could save their life. So we're going to see that in this video. We're going to see that in this video. There we go. The pain started about two years ago, two or three years ago, at a volleyball tournament. I just noticed I had some pain in my left shoulder, and then we went to an orthopedic doctor because it was shoulder pain. I didn't think anything, we didn't think anything about my heart. We followed her playing volleyball ever since she was in seventh grade. She'd been playing in pain for a couple of years, and it had seemed to get progressively worse, so we continued searching even after she got through physical therapy, trying to figure out what was going on and why she was still having pain and it wasn't getting any better. We got another opinion, another, another doctor, um, did more different types of therapy. They're always thinking that this is only to do with her nerves. Thinking some, somehow a nerve is getting pinched somewhere up in here and causing pain down this arm. The pain just kept getting worse and it started to radiate down my arm. And then it felt like it was moving into my chest more. I asked if it was my heart because that's where it felt like the pain was, but they didn't even run any tests on me to check that it was or not. I am an employee of the school, but that evening I was actually coming to the volleyball game as a mom. So for the past six years, I've been on the Code Blue team, and we just run drills about four times a year uh, in order to be prepared in case an emergency were to arise on our campus. I picked Okay, I just want to reiterate what she just said. She's an employee of the school, like she's a teacher, I don't know, but apparently her daughter's on the volleyball team as well. But she is part of, on the campus, a group of people they call the Code Blue Team. And they are people that, trained, that became trained in CPR and know what to do in case of an emergency, okay? That's what she's talking about. You're, when you see the video of them having, a, of the Claire having a heart attack, I'll point out later on you, who's who in the video because it actually plays out. You can see everybody there. They we're seeing here in this, they're, they're a little farther away. Picked Claire up partway through the day and took her to a doctor's appointment for the pain that she'd been having in her shoulder. We were back at school that afternoon for her, for her senior night volleyball game. So my coach was really good and my teammates were really good about letting me sub in and out whenever I felt like I needed a break. So as soon as I would start hurting to the point where I don't, I didn't think I could keep going, they would let me step out, and then I'd sit for a few minutes, and then I'd go back in, and then I'd do that every game. That night at the game, I had severe chest pain and pain down my shoulder and down my arm into my hand, and I was having a hard time breathing, and like I could feel my heart, like it felt like it was coming out of my chest. Is the setter? on the team and so she had gone out to set the ball and this is a, a point of reference when you're watching the video they're going to come back to it in a second but that's clear right there and you can even see that we won't see the heart attack quite yet but you can even see when i of the video go that she's struggling something she knows something's wrong you see her kind of backing out um she kind of backs away from the net and I, i'm watching her i mean i can see her i was on the front row of the bleachers and I see her just fall flat. Very clear with the first two to her side. The color was draining from her face. Her eyes were kind of rolled back. She was very clenched up, like like she was having a seizure and she was not responding. Like, you know, I'm there and kind of shaking her but she's not responding and we just immediately started yelling help. When Claire hit the ground, it, was, it wasn't as if she collapsed to the ground. She literally fell straight back. And the sound of her head hitting the hardwood floor really was a game stopper. It's a sound that I will never forget. Her parents, Eric and Lisa, immediately run to her. And very quickly behind them are two other first responders. Claire's turning white. Her eyes are unresponsive. She has a very disturbing gurgling sound in her throat. As they're beginning CPR, because of my code blue training, I know that literally 30 steps out the door is an AED. So we got the AED to Claire in about 30 seconds. 
they finished about two rounds of CPR while I was putting the pads on Claire, turning it on. The AED immediately started to prompt us as to what to do. It told us to continue CPR. The AED prompted us to shock Claire. And honestly, that was really scary for me. I had Eric and Lisa at Claire's head, and they were crying and praying. And I thought, you want me to shock a 17-year-old? Are you kidding me? And so actually the first time the AED prompted me to shock, I did not shock Claire. I kind of looked at everyone and I said, it's telling me to shock her, what should I do? And about six seconds later, the AED prompted me again. It said, shock advised. And they just gave me the confidence that I needed. They said, Julie, you gotta push the button. And so I pushed the button and it was literally like you see on television. I mean, Claire literally lifted off the gym floor. Um, the AED prompted us to continue CPR, which we did. And then about three and a half, four minutes in, right after Claire hit the floor, life started to return in Claire. Oh, I do remember feeling nauseous right before and then blacking out and waking up on the floor with a bunch of people surrounding me and I thought I'd passed out. I was really confused why the AED was on and why I couldn't feel my legs or my arms. It was scary. So the ambulance arrived about 11 and a half minutes after Claire hit the ground. Doing CPR for 11 and a half minutes would not have been enough to save Claire. So I'm just so thankful that the AED was literally 30 steps away and that we had what we needed to save her life. Claire is happy. She is whole. She is going to college. She's going to have a great future because we had what we needed to save her life. I want to show you real quick. It's actually pretty impressive uh, their reaction because they were perfect. You'll see hey, I don't, I don't think they are. you will see um, uh, the first two people that get there are, um, are uh, her parents. You'll see them go through the first two and then you'll see two uh, teachers come up beside them. One of the teacher turns and points to somebody in a blue jacket the person in the blue jacket points back to him. The person in the blue jacket is Julie, the, the lady that said she's on the code blue team. And I know what they said right then. They said, get the AED. Watch, they're gonna see him point. There's the, where's the lady in the blue jacket? There's the lady in the blue jacket. Right here, no somebody made it. They're gonna point at it, she's pointing at them. Now she's gonna point at this kid right here. What's he doing? He took his phone out after she pointed at him. What's he doing? Calling 911. So it's pretty impressive, this, this how well they did it. And thank God uh, she survived. Okay, I have another video I wanna show you. This is also, it has pictures of an auntie giving her infant nephew CPR. I don't know why someone took pictures of this, but they did. And she's gonna tell you the story about how her training and being CPR trained just kicked in and she was able to save her nephew. My sister had called me and asked me to do her the favor of taking Sebastian to the hospital the following day to get checked because he was, he was, his breathing was labored. On my way home, um, I was on the phone with my husband, we were talking and as is customary, Sebastian starts to cry. I had left the hospital maybe 10 minutes ago when Sebastian stops crying. So I just, I put the car in park right then and there. And I just jumped to the back seat. When I saw him, his body was pale and he was unresponsive. At that moment, my heart just dropped. I, I didn't know what to do. I just, I was scared because he wasn't breathing. I ran out of my car holding the baby and I started screaming for help. Sebastian was already blue. I just dropped to my knees and performed CPR on him. It was just like my body knew what to do. My brain was not thinking straight. The training I'd had previously, it just kicked into motion and it all came back to me. After what seemed like an eternity, he started crying and breathing again. At that moment, I felt nothing but relief. That, that's when I started crying. I think it's important to understand that CPR is not something that just doctors and, and, and firefighters and nurses can do. It's really something that everyone can do. Okay. Steve, 
scary stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we're going to do a dialogue where we are going to call or play out a situation where someone calls 911. But before we do that, I want to go through some terminology, some vocabulary that they use in the script just to help us make sure we understand what the words mean. And that when we read the script, we know what we're saying. The first word on our the first word on our paper is victim. Repeat after me. Victim. 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 The victim is the person who is hurt. Okay? The 911 call operator says, uh, how old is the victim? Wants to know how old the person who is hurt. The victim is the, my handwriting is like a third grader, so forgive me. The person who is hurt. One is witness. Repeat after me. Witness. 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 Anybody know what a witness is? Uh, witness. You yeah. witness. Yeah. Like eyewitness. Eyewitness. You saw the car accident. The person who saw the accident. I think I need to do bleeding. Do I? Do you know what bleeding is? Bleeding. When, when you have bleeding. a cut, blood's coming out. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think I need to do bleeding. Unconscious is hard for me to define. Unconscious is when you're not awake, but you're not sleeping. You have something has happened that has that has harmed you, and you're not awake. Okay. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, not awake and hurt. When you're awake, they say you're conscious. I get in a car accident, I'm unconscious. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can think of a better definition, Mark. Roll of it. Injured, this is the verb injured, as in I've been hurt, I've been injured. It means the same thing, okay? I've been hurt, I've been injured. I'm going to go with the same thing it says here. The person who is hurt is the person who is injured. Yeah, I, I, that had bleeding on for levels three, but I, I think levels five, six, they know bleeding. How many knew what unconscious was already? Raise your hand. Did you know what unconscious was? Yes. A few people? Injuries are the specific things that are hurt. What are his injuries? He has a cut on his head. He has a broken arm. Those are his injuries. That is where he is hurt. So injuries are the places they are hurt. I'm going to say the victim is hurt. The place is hurt. Intersection. Intersection's a little tougher. I'm going to draw. This is a Pacific Avenue right here. Okay? Pacific. 
on Pacific Avenue. You know the street that's right, right out there, okay? The street that goes this way is Harding, right? Where those two streets meet is the intersection. Intersection. Where those two streets meet, that is the intersection. So I'm going to say where two streets cross. Cross Street is very similar. In the story, the man says, I'm on the corner of, I'll just make up a name, of, well, I'm on the corner of Pacific Avenue. Well, there's lots of corners on Pacific Avenue, right? There's, but there's probably five within a mile right here, corners on Pacific Avenue. So the, the 911 operator says, what is the cross street? The cross street is, what corner are you on? The cross street is being hardy, okay? So it's the corner, the corner you are on. What is the cross street? Well, actually, it's the intersection. I need a visual for hang up. Where's your where's the phone for your class? It's over there. Okay. If you look back here at me, hang up is something from the olden days before cell phones, but we still use the phrase. This is a phone. If I'm gonna hang up, that's hanging up. Okay. Nowadays, all we do when we hang up is we just push the button to turn the phone off. Mm -hmm. Okay? So hang up is ending the phone call. The next one is also a bit of a, a, an old expression, stay on the line. Have you, have you heard that before, stay on the line? You ever wonder why they say, what line? There's no line on, there's, there's no line on my cell phone. Yeah, she's pointing, she's gonna show, she knows. Watch this. Here's the line on the old cell, on the old phones. And when they say stay on the line, they mean don't hang up. We did paramedics already when we were, had the, uh, uh, the different emergency responders. So I'm gonna skip that. I'm gonna go to dispatcher. If I get rid of the er at the end of dispatcher, the word is dispatch. When you dispatch something, you send it. When you dispatch something, you send it. The person who answers the phone when you call 911 is called the dispatcher because they're going to send either a policeman if it's a crime, a fire truck if it's a fire, or an ambulance if someone's hurt. That's why they call them a dispatcher, because they are sending the, the proper emergency person. So I'm gonna say the, the, the 911 operator, or the person who answers 911. Now we're going to have our little dialogue. For you, for you, and you, and you, and Mark, I'm going to have you help me out. We're going to, we're going to act it out for them once before they go together. And sure. Here. And you, 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 and
Okay, I'm going to have Mr. Anton be the dispatcher, and I'll be the caller, but my first emergency is I need my glasses. <laughs> if I'm the dispatcher, I'll be sitting now. Yes. So, let's see how to the phone or something. Okay. Okay, so I guess I need to start it, right? Yes, sir. 911, what is the emergency? There's been a two-car accident. What is your location? We are on the corner of Barnwell Street. What is the cross streets? Bronwell Street and Mesa Drive. Has anyone been injured? Yes, one of the drivers. How old is the victim? Young, maybe 25. Is the victim conscious? No, he is unconscious. Is the victim breathing? It's hard to tell, but I think so. Is the victim bleeding? Yes. Yes, he is bleeding badly. Is the victim still in the car? Yes, he's still in the car. Is the victim male or female? Male. That one always bothers me. I just got this offline, but I've referred to him as he several times. <laughs> is he male or female? He's still male. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what you should say. He's still male. He's yeah. still male. Okay, is anyone with the victim? Yes, his friend. What's your name? And you'll say your name when you read it. Brian yeah. Canapa. Okay, well, we have firefighters and paramedics on the way. Please stay on the line. I will hang up when help arrives. Thank you. I will stay on the line. Okay, I want you to pick a partner. Find a partner. At one time, you're going to read as the dispatcher. At one time, you're going to read as the caller. But you have to have a partner. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Frank, why don't you? Let's see. Let's stop. Okay. Oh.